just, we'll just uh, watch you get in it here. All right, here goes Stafford. Those who have been following my channel for a while may recall about a decade ago when I made this boat. It's called the Coral Kayak. I made plans for it. it folds up into a four by two foot uh, little package you could throw in your car and take it on a lake. I was interested in making something with pointy front end back end, kind of like the Oru kayak or the tuck tail. Now those two guys, uh, they were long. Uh, Koru kayak uses five millimeter custom made fluted plastic, the tuck tack a harder uh, plastic. You know, one sheet tie wrapped together. Unbelievable. Yeah, um, especially, you know, waves like this. I wasn't expecting to get out and these little guys, what are the swells about? Ten inch foot? Yeah, they're enough to throw roll up in them. Yeah. My challenge was, instead of spending hundreds of dollars for one of these boats, why not see if I can build one out of a 4 by 8 sheet of fluted plastic? Now, in the past, I'd go to my plastic supply place and get some Coraplast. Very nice stuff. But these days, they moved south, way south. So I got to go to Home Depot to buy anything. 4 by 8 4 millimeter sheet there is still relatively priced, but not as good quality as what I used to get for a plaid. Well, this little guy proved to be kind of fun, but I wanted to make some improvements, so I went on to the second generation. It's kind of like a river kayak. I used a campaign sign to see if I could hold back some of the moisture, strengthen up the hole, but in the end, uh, I got blown around pretty easily, and it was kind of hard to get in and out of things. So I went on to version 3. Version 3 was uh, 2 inches lower in height to keep it from getting blown around. And I also made this uh, wooden 1 by 2 frame that uh, just a rectangle, sits inside the cockpit, and uh, really strengthens things up. Show those waves! thought about this a lot of how I could support these sidewalls from caving in. So I'm just giving these a try. Again, experimentation, simple. This is version 3 again, but this time I added a stabilizing fin on the back. I'm going to give that a try. Still kind of hard getting in this thing. Notice some water getting in. And it was difficult getting my feet in the dang thing. I'm already wet. Shit. <laughs> I added a little aluminum hook to the... Uh, one side of my oar so I could uh, reach out and deploy my uh, little fin. The new stabilizer fin was so long that when you paddled, the boat would lean in toward the side you're paddling. It was kind of difficult to get used to, but in the end it worked. It kept me pretty straight. Yeah, I decided right afterward um, I was going to make version 4. This time a little wider and uh, make the cockpit a little longer too, so I wouldn't have difficulty getting in and out of the boat. 
for there. These are made for coal. This made it much easier to get into the boat, swing my foot in, and uh, increase the footprint actually uh, where you contacted the water, so they're a lot more stable too. Have the platform there, gets me up off the floor so my butt doesn't get wet. And this board here, yeah, keeps things nice and uh, in place as I'm sitting on it because the thinness of the plastic will make this just want to pop up. Actually, the biggest improvement for this uh, version was the uh, rear bulkhead. Notice how I'm putting a lot of pressure on the uh, side rails. All that um, weight is being transferred down to the bottom of the boat now, keeping the sides from collapsing. Just a couple improvements. I've got a new lead rope there, a place for my GoPro, new armrests here, and nice and smooth so you don't rub your arms on them. Water bottle holder, and last but not least, and try out another uh, stabilizing fin. Yeah, and I like the rope here. I attached it to my uh, paddle in case I fall in. I can grab the boat or the paddle, and at least the two will be together. Well, I got my fin deployed, stabilizer fin. It seems to be working okay. Not sure if it's totally true. And a little boat like this with high sides, you know, you get the wind that kind of tries to twist you around. So you got to fight it a little bit, do a little extra paddle to one side to straighten yourself out every now and again. So here's two handy features I added today. Um, this keeps the oar still while I'm uh, getting in the boat, so I don't have to hang on to it. Just a little Velcro strap, and I can move it about. Kind of catches right on the edges here. There you go. And then this, it's my fishing pole holder. <laughs> so I launched the boat here, and uh, but when I got in the water, my butt immediately started getting wet. I cut off an end of a bolt, got hot, and it melted two holes in there. So, um, you know, these are two little pine cones, and they hold back the water for a good hour. <laughs> oh man, holes happen. But it's nothing a little Gorilla duct tape can't fix. I'm going to put some even on the inside here. Why not? Well, let's tear the kayak down. What I wanted to show you is this bulkhead. I decided to go with plywood instead of coroplast just because it's a lot more sturdier. This is a um, 3 8 inch, I believe. Yeah, AC notched. Those three little zip ties attach it to this guy here. made out of one by twos some screws then we have the bulkhead here the weight sits a little further back so um, there's more pressure that's putting on these sides here I've got a nail too that I shove here and uh, that keeps the little flap under here I'm going back and forth but anyway this is the little bulkhead, basically. Here's the pine cone I used to plug the hole with.
And then basically you have a bunch of zip ties that you're going to throw away, or you can get the uh, releasable zip ties, which is what I've done in the past. There it is, it's about 11 pounds. Um, yeah, not too big. Can easily fit in any car. It's a boat, it's a way to get out on the water. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. Bye bye.